Well, I'm kneeling down here in front of the national champion White Oak in Brunswick County, Virginia. It's in my district here. Thought I'd stop by and start our video today. Welcome for 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jason Fisher, your host, and today we're going to talk about the White Oak family. Behind me, I've got the national champion Quercus Alba. Uh, it's a privately owned tract here. The house was built in the early 1700s. I'm finding out, I just met the owners. They're very kind to let me come by here and start our video here today. It's pretty beat up from years of storms and the owner tells me there's a lot of cabling that was put in place. So there's been some efforts to salvage some of the limbs on this tree, which you can see looking down low, some pretty good size limbs. Probably there were some swings hanging off of these over the years, I can only imagine. This tree's got to be 30 feet in circumference, so I'm just going to walk around the base. So not often you see a tree, I'm going to say 500 plus years old. Uh, you can just see the bark thick and grooved, and there's probably been a lot of effort here to, to save this tree. Here's the cable in on one side. Looking pretty rough. I am very curious if it has some acorns. Not seeing any down here low. But uh, it's just an amazing tree just to stand beside it and be able to witness and just imagine the things this tree has seen and witness, not to mention uh, the storms it's withstood. So generally when you think of white oak, everybody thinks of Quercus alba, which, which that is in the white oak family, but that's the most common uh, oak that we have. Uh, this tree is, has such a clean... Uh, lower bowl or lower trunk on it because it's growing here amongst a lot of other trees. But the one thing about white oak is they, they can grow almost anywhere. I mean they're very versatile and that's why they're so valued. One reason why they're so valued, you, you can find them near ridge tops on the mid slope and even down in the, the, the bottom land, river bottom. And here's last year's acorn. Put in the pot here and got it going so it's uh, Year, year and a half old seedling. Narrow leaves here in the shade. Looks a little different. This is just a good spot to, to grow. It's my little nursery. East side of the house under some azaleas so it gets four, five, six hours of light. That will help get them through the first summer as long as you remember to water them. South side, west side of a home or building does not work for a nursery. So, And then two years ago we got this seedling. See the leaves much more like the, the parent. Here we have a much larger swamp white. I want to show you a couple things. One, uh, the acorns here that have come out they have a really long stem that supports the acorn, much longer than uh, Quercus alba. You can see the leaves are kind of spatulate, rounded tips, much narrower than our chestnut oak. The bark's what I wanted to show you. Okay. And look at this bark. I mean, it almost looks like American chestnut, but uh, smooth, gray. This tree I planted in 2014, so it is going on nine years old. And we had acorns for the first time last year. Of course, it's out here in the open where it's getting everything, so um, that was a little early, I thought, for... For an oak but when out in the open it's got everything it needs but i've been potting the acorns from this growing them out and planting them on our farm it's a place we're trying to re-establish on the river and get rid of the privet and ailanthus and restore that river bottom to willow oak and and swamp white all right we're right here on the banister river in surfside virginia halifax county in a bend here on the river a friend of mine has a cabin up on the hill uh, we may see on our way out Bill Stillman. Bill, tell everybody good morning. Good morning. And Bill's my partner today getting me down this hill with a climbing rope because at the foot of this hill we've got Quercus Mashoei, which is swamp chestnut oak. And I've got a leaf here in my hand that I'm going to put in front of the camera. Often confused with Quercus Montana, which is chestnut oak. We'll see that in a minute. But we're still in the white oak family. We've covered a bunch so far. 
uh, Quercus alba, which is what everybody thinks of with white oak, uh, grows in river bottoms and floodplains. We don't have acorns down just yet. It's a little bit early, but I do have a my acorn cap here that's from last year, and it is a little bit bigger. The acorns are much bigger with Quercus mashoei swamp chestnut oak. In fact, you can see the size of this cap just in my hand, how much bigger it is. And it makes you wonder, how in the world does a duck or an animal swallow that, that size acorn? But they do. They feed on them. And so swamp, swamp chestnut oak is a very important wildlife tree. Um, I looked it up as far as its merchantability with, with Quercus alba in its second it's sold as white oak, obviously, if it's ever harvested, but it's second to Quercus alba, but a very important wildlife tree. And so there are a lot of benefits to the white oak family, and one being uh, wildlife. The turkeys will come in here and scratch and, and find these acorns. The ducks will walk right up the bank here and feed on them in the wintertime. In fact, Bill and I have duck hunted in this area before. And if you look at this bark, follow me here, Bill. The bark on this tree, the first time that I, I hunted down here with Bill, I looked at that bark in the wintertime and I said, oh, that's a white oak. Well, of course it's a white oak, but which white oak is it? And until I came down here in the spring and saw these leaves uh, out, it was like, wait a minute, that's not Quercus alba. And so the bark is almost identical. Uh, it is a little different than Quercus alba, but to the untrained eye, uh, it's it's almost exactly the same. Um, the growth and height and everything. It's just the leaf and acorn are different. So another oak in the white oak family. Mosquitoes. <laughs> Thank you, you Bill. Here, here we are at the top of the hill at Bill Stillman's cabin at Stillman's Ridge, and he's just pointing out to me that the beams in this cabin are oak. Of course, if you look in the ends of the log you can see the the rays in it and know that it's know that it's oak probably oak that came from these woods because we just came up this bluff and he's got his uh coffee chair i call it where he could look up the river in the mornings sitting on this bluff right here we just came from down in that bottom where a swamp chestnut oak is and here is a right beside the chair a Quercus alba, a regular white oak, right here overlooking the bluff here. So you can guarantee these acorns drop down this bluff and fall right there in the river for the wildlife to enjoy and wash downstream. And that's how our seed gets dispersed. We always learn by wildlife, water, and wind. A chestnut oak, and there's swamp chestnut too. And I also did some research and found that swamp white will hybridize. Here in the middle of all this is a red oak that stuck its head up trying to compete. I'm not talking about red oaks today, but just look at the regeneration that's in this one little spot. Here's a stump that did sprout. Okay, so I'm going to peep in here. You can see the stump there. It's got all the mushrooms and fungi breaking it down, but right off to the side of it you see stump sprouts. Okay, a little more vigor here. I just want to show you, I'm walking in this one little area and I have, I have swamp, swamp white oak right here, okay, walk right over here, and I've got Quercus alba, just white oak, so right here in this one spot we have three species of white oak, okay, so up here on our edge, here's our post oak I found, some people call it a cross oak. So you can see from the leaf it has rounded edges. It's kind of smooth, but it has that cross shape to it. Step back a little ways and look up this tree. One thing I notice about post oak is it's uh it's not as limmy, doesn't have the number of limbs on it, you know, as right beside it, Quercus alba, you can see the bark. Tall, a few more limbs and right across. The road here, another Quercus a little different form from a distance post oak. It's in the white oak family. Uh, very similar bark. A lot of history with that tree. I looked up some stuff on the post oak. 
uh, it's used, it's actually marketed and sold with, with white oak. Grows on much poorer sites, lower quality sites. Uh, it's used for fence posts. It's the most common oak in Texas. And I noticed just the leaf here, it's, it's glabrous. It has a lot of hairs on it. It's fuzzy feeling versus no, no hair on Quercus hobble. So uh, another, another one of our white oak species. Last year we had that bumper crop you hear about. So white oak acorns, and these are all rotten, but you can just see last year in Virginia, we had just a bumper crop. This is the one of the big culprits in the fall of white oak. You can see the weevil, weevil hole in this acorn. And so the difference in the white oak family is they produce acorns every year versus every other year for the red oak group. And when they fall, you know, the animals just really eat them up. Blue jays, squirrels, deer, turkey. One of our final uh, oaks today in the white oak family is chestnut oak, Quercus prinus. This is a tree that's in a small arboretum up here in Lynchburg. Note this tree came from a representative chestnut oak from Gettysburg where Pickett's Charge took place. So a lot of history behind this tree. And it was planted here in Lynchburg by the tree stewards. You know, 40 years old or less. But you can see the, the deep grooves and as they get older, they get really pronounced. So I like to think of this oak as an oak of the ridge <coughs> more than the valley. <laughs> so it will grow in, in shallow soils up on mountaintops and ridges. Um, so poor sites, if you will, really dry sites. You won't find a chestnut oak most likely in a stream bottom or river bottom like where we just had the, the swamp white oaks. But chestnut oak, okay, sometimes it gets confused with swamp chestnut oak. And so you're really looking at two things in my opinion. One is where is it growing? Is it on the ridge top? Are you down in a valley or near the uh, a river or stream? And two, the, the bark to me is, it's a no-brainer. Uh, the bark is thick and grooved. It will get a lighter gray as the trees get older, whereas the swamp chestnut oak will have bark very much like Quercus alba, our regular white oaks that we think about. When people see this video, they, that's the tree they're going to think about, okay? So we're looking at the bark. The leaves have the narrow lobes, okay? So it's very similar, but you don't see, as in Quercus bicolor, you don't see the contrast as prominent. Flip the leaf over, it's it's not what I call white or light gray, okay? Um, but a neat tree nonetheless. And here's the thick grooved bark I wanted to show you that kind of differen differentiates this tree from the uh, swamp chestnut oak, okay? So here's your thick grooved bark, chestnut oak. Well, here I'm standing in South Boston, Virginia, downtown, not a place you'd expect to see white oak. But even in the urban environments, we can plant hybrids that do well in poor soils. This is a regal oak, which is a cross between a swamp white oak and a English oak, I believe. I'll double check that. And it's a busy Friday here in the fall, but you can see the streets are lined here. Don't like that it's a monoculture, but yet it's a interesting place I thought I would share that I discovered and a lot of towns are putting these in here's the acorn looks very similar to the swamp white doesn't come out of the cap quite as far just thought I'd point that out thank you for watching 15 minutes in the forest and being with us today the white oak family is a special tree uh, both historically in our nation as well as uh, for use of forest products wildlife, and other needs.